Oh god, I don't know why I'm doing this. I look so bad right now. Hey guys, ignore how I look. Good morning. Why did I decide to start the video with a morning face? Well, because today I'm gonna be doing a 24 hour readathon. Okay, so I did attempt to do this last year. I filmed one, but like only reading thriller books and I kind of failed. I let it kind of like span two, three days. I don't want to do that this time. I really want to read for like 24 hours straight. Will I fail? I don't know, maybe. But I really, really want to commit and I want to try not to. I set like a TBR for myself. Some books on there are from my monthly TBR. So I want to try to get through that. Others are just some other random books. And the difference is that most of them, I'm going to be reading them on my my kindle and then others audiobooks too i think that's gonna help me a lot to read on my kindle a lot faster i'm planning like while i eat or like do my makeup while i get ready listen to the audiobooks so that's gonna help me like not waste time you know i'm gonna try not to pause the timer a lot we went all nighter if i fall asleep hey i'm human okay what can i do but like i said we're gonna try not to fail i'm gonna try not to fail so i am currently reading love redesigned by lauren asher i don't even think i've gone to like the 100 page mark let me see okay now at page 77 so i'm gonna be continuing that right now probably just gonna like start an audiobook because right now i'm gonna get ready for the day just so i can like again not waste time but i'll let you guys know obviously i'll keep you updated on everything <laughs> So I got ready even though I'm still in my PJs. But you know what? Today is going to be a long day. So eating some oatmeal and of course coffee because like I said, it's going to be a long day. So we're going to need coffee. It's going to be a must. It's a must for every day, but especially for today. I told you I would start with an audiobook. I'm at 22 hours, 4 minutes, and 15 seconds. And I decided to start The Exception to the Rule by Christina and Lauren. I'm like really close to finishing it though. It's like really short, so. But I thought I'd tell you about it first. It's giving You've Got Mail. You know, that rom-com movie with Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan. It's giving that. So it's about Tara and Callum. And basically they meet because Callum emails Tara, not knowing that she's a student he intended to email a teacher about his midterm grade but yeah he got the email wrong and she wrote back said like hey i'm a student not a teacher and they kind of just like started emailing back and forth oh but like when he emailed her it was on valentine's day they kind of started a tradition from that day callum kind of like continue it because next year on that same day february 14th he emailed her again saying like happy valentine's day that's when it all started and since then it's been a competition on like who says it first who wishes the other a happy valentine's day first and then yeah from like that day they've kind of been telling each other small details about themselves about their lives but they wanted to keep like everything private at first just because like you know they're both strangers to one another so it's kind of like okay you know emailing a stranger about where i live or <laughs> where i'm going out tonight probably not smart but more than seven years passed so for like half of the book it's just been emails, which has been fun, interesting, different. I don't mind it. Now they've kind of gotten more comfortable with each other. So they've been sharing more information with each other, more details about their lives, about themselves. And they kind of both admitted to one another that um, they're both interested in each other. But they were kind of like passing ships for a moment there because when Tara asked Callum, like he had a girlfriend and then vice versa, when he asked her, she had a boyfriend. But now they're both single and they're kind of just like, you know, let's meet up. I don't know. It's been interesting. Like I've been liking it a lot, but also like knowing that I'm almost finished with the book, it feels like I've read half a book and I get it like the book's short it's not meant to be like a fully developed book but I was really liking it so I'm gonna be sad that it's almost finished and I know I'm not gonna get to like fully know the characters I guess I'll let you know when I finish it <laughs> So, forgot to say, I'm listening on the Kindle app because I just recently found out that you can listen to free audiobooks. I mean, I don't know why I say it like this. They are really free, but I have Kindle Limited, right? The subscription. Some books on here, you can listen to them free. This is one of them. I like it a lot because as you're listening to it, if you're also reading it, Valentine, bonkers. It highlights it for you at the same time. The audio is going, so that's great. <laughs> Hey 
Hi guys, I'm back. I finished the exception to the rule. I'm gonna be talking about it at the end of this video because I kind of, again, just don't want to pause the timer. Try not to as much as I can. And I feel like I'll think about it better, have more fully formed opinions if I just wait. I know I'm probably being annoying by doing this, but you're gonna have to wait for that, I guess. I'm at 21 hours, 53 minutes, and 59 seconds. And I'm gonna be starting Love Redesigned. I've just been itching to continue it, so I'm so excited to be doing that right now. To tell you a little bit of what's going on in this book. It is basically about Julian and Dahlia. It's dual PLV. This is a billionaire romance. It is second chance romance. They were kind of like childhood rivals. Not kind of. I mean, they were really. So it's also rivals to lovers. So they've kind of just always been at it for a really long time in competition with one another. The banter, it is so good. It is so good. Like, I expected this from a Laura Nasher book, but oh my gosh, in this book, it's just so, it's so good. I'm like giggling and kicking my feet already so much. This book starts with Dahlia coming back to Lake Wisteria, and she's returning because she recently got out of a long-term relationship and she was engaged, but they broke it off and she's not in a good place right now. And she's an interior designer, a famous one. She even has like a TV show. And Julian is the billionaire. He has a construction company they bump into each other and it's not a great kind of like first meet after such a long time but instantly I feel the chemistry I feel the tension loving it already and I'm so invested already so the plot is also that like I said Dahlia is going through a tough time right now she kind of needs her spark again so she sees this historic house and she wants to renovate it and Julian kind of like makes a deal with her to renovate it together and then they could triple their profits and she thinks this is what will get her spark back so yeah that's basically it but i'm so 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 excited to be continuing it this will be part of the series the lakefront billionaire series the sequel is going to be coming out this year very soon i think so excited for that i'll update you if i need to say anything else I'm at page 91, but I just had to say it feels so good. I love when Lauren Asher kind of like does a crossover between her worlds of many books and many series because right now a character that was in the Dreamland Billionaire series actually three characters appeared in this book and I just love when she does that and when that happens in a series because it's so heartwarming. I love those characters so just to like read about them again, yeah, it makes me so happy. I just wanted to say that. Really enjoying it still. Guys, I just wanted to say something. I'm at page 127 and I just cannot stop laughing and like smiling and giggling and kicking my feet because like I said, they're rivals, right? They were childhood rivals, they're still rivals. And the banter, it is so good, like I said, because they just keep going back and forth with one another, like throwing little like jabs at each other. I'm laughing so much because they literally act like children, like sometimes with one another. They had an interaction at kind of like this Halloween party in their small town and it didn't go that great like julian said something that he shouldn't have said and so the next day both their families are really close with one another i forgot to say both of their mothers are best friends so they had kind of like this dinner party they haven't stopped kind of like you know again throwing jabs at one another going back and forth right now there's this scene and it's just so funny like i'm loving it that's all i want to say to update that um apart from the many tropes that this book has which are among my favorites i just found out it also has the one bed trope yeah so right now i'm reading a scene where they're stuck at this hotel for the night and uh they weren't able to book two separate rooms so i mean if you can't tell already how i feel about bed tropes yeah i love them who doesn't right i mean if you say you don't love them you're lying to yourself just admit it. Anyways, just wanted to say that. Hey guys, so as you can obviously tell, it's a couple hours later. I'm speaking in a low voice, almost whispering, because obviously everyone in my house is asleep, except for me. <laughs> Great. We love that. Anyways, it is 5.35 in the morning. I have officially 14 hours, 58 minutes, and 40, well, I'm counting seconds left i kept pausing the timer today like i said i didn't want to like i tried not to as much as i can but sometimes i got distracted to be honest so obviously i finished love redesign again gonna talk about that at the end of this video which i'm excited to oh camera's running out of battery so i'm gonna wrap this up quickly but next book i'm gonna be reading all in by jennifer Lindborns. this is the third installment in the natural series so i don't know how much i can say about it i'll be updating you of course as always but it is like in the middle of a series so i don't want to spoil anything but i'll tell you what i can you know what I love about 
about this series, but in every book, it has two POVs. Cassie's POV and the POV of like the person you're trying to figure out who's doing the crimes, like the serial killer basically. And it's always titled you. Kind of like getting into his or her mind is really interesting to me. Yeah, it's also fun because I love like putting my mind to that. Solve the plot twist, try to figure it out. Form theories along with the characters. I get to live out my FBI dreams. I'm gonna stop talking now because the birds are chirping outside. That's how you know it's too early in the morning to be talking. So. So I just wanted to update you. So I started All In by Jennifer Lynn Barnes, which you already knew. I don't know why I said that. And I paused the timer at 9 hours, 42 minutes, and 35 seconds. Yesterday I fell asleep, so I couldn't complete the all night or I couldn't do that. But this is also just a great way to do it, honestly. I think I have not failed. But anyway, so I'm at page... Hold on. Oh, I didn't put the bookmark in, but I remember what page I left off on. Hold on. Chapter 35, page 201. So about halfway through, if you don't know basically the Naturals, the series, it's about this group of teenagers who are in this program that the FBI created. It's kind of like a secret program. All the teenagers in this program have natural skills, natural talents, natural gifts. There's Sloane, Leah, Cassie, which we're reading from her POV, all the books, and then Dean and Michael. And they're practically a family, okay? So they've become really close, all of them. I love this series because it makes me feel like I'm part of their family. I'm part of their really close friend group. It's always felt like that since the first book. Now even more that I know the characters so well. Basically in this book, it's like in Las Vegas because there's a serial killer that's been killing people. <laughs> Sorry, it's not funny. Murder is not funny, okay? It's just like, what else can serial killers do? other than kill people but anyways in like casinos different casinos each day there's like a pattern the teenagers in this program like aren't supposed to get involved in like cases that are happening in real time only like cold cases because they're there to get trained mostly but that was kind of like in the first book throughout the series right now in this third book they're already kind of like permitted to get involved in cases that are happening in real time so again there's this serial killer who apparently has like a pattern to his crimes to his victims so they're trying to figure it out who is this person it's very interesting i'm very invested honestly i haven't updated you a lot because i'm just like really in it that's all i can say really there's also something else going on here with like okay each of the characters deal with like internal struggles so each of them are dealing with things in this book and then cassie is also dealing with something that like has been present in each of the book in the natural series since like the first one so yeah i don't know if that's gonna get solved in this book but there's a lot going on i'll update if i need to say anything else Hey guys, so it's the next day. I finished all in last night. Today's the third day of doing this 24 hour readathon. I officially have three hours, 13 minutes, and eight seconds left. Anyways, I just wanted to update you on the next book that I started, which I'm pretty sure will be the last book that I read for this video. I started The Perfect Child by Lucinda Berry. It's a thriller book. I felt like I needed a book that was fast paced that I could finish quickly. Basically, to tell you what it's about, this has three POVs. Two of the POVs is this married couple Hannah Bauer and Christopher Bauer. Hannah's like a nurse and Christopher is a surgeon. Work in the medical field, same hospital even, but like Christopher works morning shifts and Hannah works night shifts. And they've both been trying to have a kid, but they found out they had infertility problems. Hannah has had miscarriages and as well adopting a kid, they've had bad luck with that. One day, Hannah is working her night shift and they bring in this like toddler, this little girl that has been abused because of her bruises on her body. Her head has been shaved. She's like really, really thin, really small, really fragile, and she had been abandoned. Hannah hadn't met her yet, but her husband had because he had to like perform surgery on her. She had been admitted to the hospital. She had been there for a couple weeks and Christopher had met her like I said already because of the surgery and had gotten very very close with her. They had formed this bond. Christopher had insisted on Hannah meeting her but that first like meet hadn't gone that great. But anyway so then they both decide to become her temporary foster parents. It's tough. It's really tough because of her past. This little girl has gone through a lot. You know she's having a hard time adjusting. They want to do this for her because again Christopher had become really close with 
with her. Hannah still like is having a hard time like just forming a bond with her. But anyway, so as they kind of like interview couples, none of them seem good enough for Christopher. He kind of makes this impulsive decision for them to become her forever parents. He really wants to do this and Hannah really does too but she has always had this dream of like having a baby. So adopting Janie, which is the little girl's name, would mean that she would be giving up that dream of having a baby because they're both in like their late 40s she kind of then like sees how much Christopher wants this so she agrees Hannah sees that like they have the resources and they can really help her her social worker which is the third POV in this book she's been dealing more personally with Jamie and helping her she has said multiple times to Hannah and Christopher this is gonna take some time like more than a year for her to adjust it's been a hard time for both of them they kind of took like a break from work to help Janie adjust like the first weeks and now Christopher has gone back to work but Hannah still wants to take time off from work like maternity leave basically so she's been staying home alone with Janie basically Janie has like completely ignored her her and Christopher are the ones that really have been close and Hannah hasn't had time to form a bond with her and she's been trying really trying and it's already been like two weeks and it hasn't gone better and yeah it is going pretty fast like I'm invested I haven't been bored so I'll update you if I need to say anything else it's um a couple hours later I just wanted to update you at one hour 39 minutes and four seconds I've been listening to it just the past couple hours because I was doing some coloring on my iPad you probably don't care but I'm gonna show you anyways I want to buy a coloring book because I I love to do it physically but while I do that I'm gonna do it here. Coloring in general while I listen to audiobooks just helps me a lot. It makes me relax. Okay, look. And then I like this one that I did. So cute. And I'm at page 181. So halfway through. It says here I have three hours and eight minutes left in the book. As I showed you, it says that I have one hour left. So I'm not going to be able to finish this book before the timer ends. But I feel like I'm going to have left less than 100 pages. So even then, I'm going to finish it still. So things have been escalating. Just like in her behavior. Like they had made progress in a lot of ways. But then something happened. And so that kind of like made Jane go backwards the husband was like frustrating me so much he still is because the wife kept saying to him like she's doing this on purpose like she's not talking to me he wouldn't believe her brushed it off it's horrible it's like so bad when someone doesn't believe you and especially if it's your husband like he's the number one person supposed to be like on the list that believes you no matter what but something happened and I'm just like I feel like it's just gonna get a lot more intense I'll keep you updated seconds left in this 24 hour readathon. Pretty sure it's gonna take longer for me to finish this book, but I'm gonna finish it anyways. It's so intense right now, I, I can't even. The timer stopped. Like I finally finished this 24 hour readathon. I almost don't believe it, but it's true. I'm gonna keep reading until I finish this book because I need to know what happens. I only have, can't do the math mentally, so I'm gonna do it on my calculator. 23 pages left. I'm gonna finish this and I'll update you when I finish it. I finished The Perfect Child. I was gonna wait until tomorrow, but honestly, I think it's best to talk about all the books that I read in this video finally tonight better than tomorrow. I read a total of four books. Actually, I wanna calculate how many pages I read in total, so I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, that took longer than it should have, but I read a total of 1,380 pages. I'm proud of myself. I feel so good now. I read four books straight in the span of three days. I feel like all I want to do is read, and that's a good feeling. Anyways, just wanted to say that. Now to talk about the books that I read in this video. The first one was The Exception to the Rule by Christina Lauren. This one is very, very short. Actually, I wish it could have been longer, because I, I was starting to like the characters a lot, so, and then when I just finished, it just went by so quickly, but it's giving You've Got Mail vibes. I think I said this, didn't I? Yeah, I think I did. So that was fun. 
because I love rom-com movies and especially 90s, early 2000s. And it was just so sweet and cute. I don't have much like thoughts about it because like again it was so short I didn't get to know the characters. It just felt like it was kind of like rushed. But it was still cute. I don't have anything to say like bad about it. So I rated it three stars. Then I read Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher. It felt so comfortable in a way because I read the Dreamland Billionaire series by Lauren Asher and I loved her writing so much. The way she writes men, I just, I love it. So I was glad to be back in like her world reading her book. This book had like no miscommunication at all, which I absolutely loved. The miscommunication trope is not my favorite at all. So I just appreciate it a lot when a book doesn't have it. They were just so in touch with their feelings, communicated with each other. That was just like great for me. Like I was so enjoying it. There was no third act breakup as well. And then this book like really gave acts of service because Julian, that was his love language. He would just do so many things for Dahlia, small or big, but meaningful nevertheless. He would notice small details about her. I mean, he knew her so well. I love like characters that already have a history going into a book because like you can already feel it, like the chemistry, the tension. It just felt so right between them. He would just like go above and beyond for her to make her happy. Like it hurt because I'm like, I wish to have what they have. They speak Spanish, both of them, and they would just kind of like switch between languages. And it's just so funny. They would speak Spanish when they were like mad at each other. They would also speak Spanish to each other romantically. It had me giggling in my feet as a fellow Latina. I loved the banter between them. Lauren Asher writes really good banter. She's almost right here with Emily Henry. In this book, wow, these two characters can stop smiling, can stop laughing because like the way they would interact with each other. They would throw jabs at one another, but it was funny. That's how like they kind of show that they love each other. And they would also just like have so much fun with one another that has to do with the fact that they have a lot of history so I just I love that so much. Also the way they would encourage each other loved every single second of it. Characters like that when they have a relationship like that always just like instantly I connect with them. They're always just like so special to me. Another thing I wanted to talk about Dahlia she like it was spoken a lot in this book about her struggle with depression and anxiety and I appreciate it a lot Lauren and how she wrote it. It was just like so real and so raw which there's beauty in that. With anxiety I definitely definitely 100% relate to her. So yeah, I was debating at the time whether this was a 4.75 or a 5 star read and I think I'll give it a 4.75. I didn't get a 5 star feeling with this book and I know when I get it because it's, you know, it, it's a special kind of feeling. But I love this book so much nevertheless. I mean, it's a 4.75 for me so that says enough. Then I read All In by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. It's the third book in the Natural series. I love this series so much. It's found family so I already feel like I'm part of their family but I just love like the writing, like the storytelling is so beautiful, so captivating. This book is definitely a page turner. Like the short chapters which I love. I love short chapters. They're gonna make you like keep reading the book and not put it down because you'll want to know what happens next. It's so addicting. It's so fast paced. Things are moving so quickly. It had me on the edge of my seat and I was never bored. Not for once. Every book in the series up until now has been very intense but this one I felt like it was more intense than the other ones. Like just the anxiety, the anticipation, the suspense. But yeah again like the relationship each of them have with one another is just so special and I love it so much. I feel like especially in this book they had to rely on one another, be there for one another more than ever. I knew the plot twist was going to be really good really crazy and it was this book finished really insane threw me for a loop because i didn't expect it at all and it kind of like tied it in with something that has been very present since the first book in the series what i thought i knew i didn't know yeah it really had me shook and like jaw on the floor the setting in this book it's in vegas and it just made it more interesting so i really like that loved it even and this book also had to do a lot with sloan and my heart broke for her in this book i just wanted to hug her she's my girl now and i love her so much I'm definitely obsessed with the series, I mean, to say the least. I'm really, really excited to read the last book. I don't really think I got a five-star feeling with this book, so I'm gonna give it a four and a half. But it was really, really good, and I loved it, loved it so much. And the last book that I read in this 24-hour readathon, The Perfect Child, it was really fast-paced. I feel like it's insane since the first page. You really get invested in the story and the lives of these people. It'll keep you on your toes. I couldn't put it down. I just had to know what happened. Things did escalate on another level. It was so insane. It it was a roller coaster truly, but I love when thriller books do that to me. So, what bothered me about this book was the ending. The ending was so abrupt, you hit the brakes. That's it. That's it. That's the ending. And I'm like, what? Like, it felt like the ending of a chapter. It didn't feel like the ending of a book. I didn't like it at all. So, I gave this book a three and a half 
that's my rating for this book. I would recommend it, and it's my first Lucinda Berry book, but it will definitely not be my last. Anyways, that's the end of this video. We've reached the end of this 24-hour readathon. Finally, I mean, I've reached it, but you also, because you've reached the end of this video, so thank you for sticking to the end of this video if you have. I appreciate it so much, so hope you enjoyed watching. Let me know if you want me to do this again. Subscribe if you haven't yet, and I guess that's all I have to say. See you guys in the next video. Bye!